This review was a long time coming. I hope it was worth the wait. The Gentleman stars Matthew McConaughey, Charlie Hunnam, Michelle Dockery, Jeremy Strong, Henry Golding, Colin Farrell, and Hugh Grant. Written and directed by Guy Ritchie. It was released on Blu-ray April 21st, 2020 and runs 1 hour 54 minutes. After working on King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, and doing a little job for... <laughs> Guy Ritchie returns to his crime film roots with The Gentleman. Matthew McConaughey plays Mickey Pearson, who's built the largest marijuana business in England. Now, as he's looking to cash out and retire, the parasites start emerging to try and snatch his legacy out from under him. I'm glad to see the director back to his genre of origin, because this is a fun movie, though not without its faults. Charlie Hunnam plays Mickey's head bodyguard and friend Raymond. The character comes across as very competent and professional, prepared to take on any situation. Hugh Grant plays Fletcher, a tabloid paparazzo who essentially serves as the storyteller as most of the story is a flashback being told by him. He spends most of his time in the film at Raymond's house, breaking down all the events, telling Raymond what he knows, while speculating and sensationalizing other events, almost as if he's pitching a script to a movie studio, and all the time opportunistically playing multiple sides for his own gain. Mickey's wife, Rosalind, played by Michelle Dockery, owns her own business, and also serves as Mickey's level-headed consultant, as he always goes to her for different viewpoints and advice on larger deals he has to make. Coach, played by Colin Farrell, is the moral opposite of the street gangs being depicted, trying to keep kids off the streets, giving them something productive to do at his gym. When his kids get into trouble with Mickey and company, he has to plead with Raymond to forego any major repercussions. Ray agrees as long as Coach remains available for a couple of favors to repay the inconvenience, which, of course, Coach has no say in. The two villains trying to rip Mickey off are Matthew, played by Jeremy Strong, and Dry Eye, played by Henry Golding. While Dry Eye is your more typical, obvious classic type villain, always spouting how the new young generation is taking over, Matthew is low-key, classy, and unsuspecting. There's a lot going on in this movie, there's lots of exposition in the first 20 minutes while Fletcher explains the situation, and the story progressively gets more complicated as more characters interact with one another. Even Matthew and Dry Eye meet to threaten, psych each other out, and gloat about how they're going to get Mickey's business first. As much as Guy Ritchie changes dialogue on the fly while shooting, there are some memorable quotes and funny one-liners that'll keep you entertained. The directing is great too. Stylish, but nothing over the top. Cool and clever editing, with those quick shots cut in when someone is explaining something to accentuate their point, as well as small visual flares when Fletcher is telling his story. Like this very short flashback scene, for example. The focus of the shot stands still, but it's being played backwards, then suddenly slows down at the end. All the wardrobe is pretty flash as well. From head to toe, hat to shoe, impressive suits, leather jackets and raincoats, heavy English tweed materials, classy and stylish. For a movie full of criminals, there really is an underlying feel of style and class going on here. The color grading is quite neutral, natural, or true to life, a contrast from films like Snatch and Rock and Rolla, which have a little more visual interest. The opening credit sequence, on the other hand, is awesome, as Guy Ritchie always has cool credit sequences, this one having a smoke theme, with each actor billowing away in a stream of smoke, adding old film and chromatic aberration. It's clearly one of the best intros in a Guy Ritchie film. Not much to say about the music. The soundtrack isn't very memorable. It sounds appropriate for the subject matter, just not memorable for me except for perhaps the toddler's music video. I noticed Guy Ritchie's beer makes a couple quick appearances, and the name of his real-life London pub appears on Mickey's glass. I also caught three Snatch references. In Snatch, 
there was a piggy chew toy that dog swallowed whole. There's an image of a pig in The Gentleman, only this time it's the other end. One of Mickey's bodyguards uses Tyrone's catchphrase. Been bad to the bone. Thank you, Tyrone. Oh, sire. He's done a rally driving call. Thank you, Tyrone. Oh, sire. He's a natural. Thank you, Tyrone. Oh, sire. Can I go home now? Of course you can, darling. Of course you can. When Tyrone is being chased by John and Errol, it's intercut with the rabbit chase. And the bodyguard's name is Bunny. As much crime going on here, there's no police anywhere. Even in Snatch, there were a couple of detectives at the end. And in Rock and Rolla, there's that awesome on-foot chase. It's the first of his crime films I've seen without any police. There's an unsettling sense of lawlessness and anarchy throughout. And a couple of side stories don't hold much weight or feel very significant. One thing I've noticed is how it seems Guy Ritchie is trying to be too trendy here. Wouldn't be a modern movie without mentioning hits and uploading videos, though I do like the music video coaches kids produce. Cell phones everywhere, and kids yelling selfie before taking a selfie. One character falls out a window, and there's a group of kids taking pics and selfies with the body. Now who would be so sick and cold as to take a selfie with a dead bot? Oh. There's no hope for our species, is there? Also, what is with all the gay jokes? I realize Fletcher is meant to be this creepy, sleazy, opportunistic, tabloid-chasing degenerate, but the whole time he's flirting and coming on to Ray, it just doesn't stop, and quite frankly, gets on my nerves. It gets to the point where I stop believing he might be joking. Matthew is seen with who looks to be his wife on several occasions, Yet, he has a very effeminate demeanor. I got this strange feeling of statements about current world happenings sneaking in without being obvious. Certain aspects as no cops, all the gay jokes, and Raymond lecturing a group of junkies about their liberal white guilt seem to be coinciding with ideas currently being pushed onto us. And quite possibly the biggest sin of them all like Rock and Rolla, hinting at a sequel that's never going to happen. Overall, if you're a Guy Ritchie fan, you already know you're going to love The Gentleman. I can't see the casual moviegoer bothering with it. It's not for everyone. Still, it's a fun movie with some laughs and doesn't take itself too seriously. 7.5 out of 10. Say, Ray, you need to invest in some parachutes. There's a pattern emerging here. I'm sorry, boss. 